Shalom. Welcome to the Jewish View. My name is Rabbi Nachman Simon with the Chabados of Dalmar, and together with my co-host Mark Warner to statewide news service, jbiztechphilly.com. And now, as you can see, he's the columnist for the Jewish Press, which is the biggest uh, English Jewish uh, newspaper weekly. weekly in the United States. So congratulations well, to that. Well, thank you. I have a column in there called Albany Beat. And I talk about how the government relates to the Jewish community, or doesn't, as the case may be. Yeah. And uh, that's you know. And and our uh, guest today has been featured in my Albany Beat column, <laughs> you've, you've, of which I've given you copies of. Uh, we have Assemblywoman uh, Ellen Jaffe with us from Welcome Rockland County. Jewish from the Suffern area. It's a and, pleasure uh, to be here. Yeah, Thank you welcome. Uh, it's uh, it's you. You had a quite the roller coaster of a session uh, this year, didn't you? It, uh, it was interesting and, yeah. and unfortunate in various aspects. Certainly, it started out um, and it became very difficult in, initially, and, and um, but we moved on, focusing on our responsibility mm -hmm. and responding to the needs of our constituents and our communities, you know, staying focused on that, and that's so essential. And obviously, budget time is always challenging. Uh, I'm trying to figure out all the, the well, we had the death of, the, of Mario Cuomo in the beginning. Yes. We had Sheldon Silver yes. uh, not uh, step down from the speakership. Uh, and then we had a new speaker, Carl, Carl Hasty. Yeah. Do you like him? Is he a good leader? Yes, I th and you know, he, he, took, he took control, and it's because it's the first year with so many other things going yeah. on, it certainly was challenging for him. And I well, are you tr being treated well by him? I mean, because there was some shifting going on? And well, it's, you know, so? it's, it's, uh, it's always a, a something new that you have to work right. out. And, yeah. um, are you still it, chair of oversight? I'm mm -hmm. chair of oversight. Yeah, okay. Yes, oversight, analysis, and investigation. That's right. <laughs> which gives me a wide range of opportunities. You had oversight over the assembly, or you're talking no. about oversight New York State Oversight over in issues, gen general issues in New York State, and it, and it, uh, I, you know, there is no, there is so much opportunity with with a title such as that. As a matter of fact, I met this afternoon with um, program and counsel for the committee with my chief of staff and uh, my legislative director in Albany, and we talked about uh, some of the priorities uh, in terms of some roundtable discussions and hearings. I'm going to look very closely at early intervention services, mm -hmm. uh, concerns about how that is you know, being provided in terms of funding for our communities. There are some who are really struggling, some providers, and that then costs our communities a great deal because children are not don't mm -hmm. have the access to the early intervention programs, and In then also pre-K education, 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 education. Yes, okay. and, and pre-K programs. Because early intervention could also mean addiction, alcohol mm -hmm. addiction. No, oh, it could that's mean true. A that's drug true. Drug addiction. But, it could, you know, <laughs> you're right. So I just want to make sure we're talking <laughs> no, education. No, it's early. Okay. It's, it's education, <laughs> especially for children who have um, some kind of learning issues uh -huh. or. Um, and you know, as a former don't special all, education teacher, that don't we all have special <laughs> issues and we learn. We're all learning on different levels, which is why Common Core that makes is us, so difficult. To, that, well, that's what makes us so unique, yeah. each of us, and, and makes our society so special. And the, the diversity, and, and everybody comes with different. I see it not as negative, but as positives. Different, different talents, different uh, strengths, and of course, there are those, of course, in, in children who do have certain um, learning issues and. If we're able to interact very early, they have far more opportunity for success as the, as they get older. And the earlier we begin that process, this this you know when they get to kindergarten age, when their brain is really still developing, we can actually provide them with an education, and they could be responsive in a much more productive way. So, so you early were intervention is an essential service for us. You were a children. special ed teacher. I was a special education. My master's in special education from Fordham University. Oh wow! And yes. which school district did you? I taught first in Brooklyn. I, I grew up in Brooklyn. Yeah, I what neighborhood? Graduated I'm, from I'm Brooklyn from Mill Basin. Mill Basin. Yeah. Oh yes, I, I actually brought up in Brownsville. Brownsville. Uh, yeah, Saratoga Avenue. Oh, Brownsville. well, there you yes. go. I went to Tilden we High to, School. <laughs> you went to Tilden, I went to Lafayette High School. Yeah, so that was fancy. <laughs> <laughs> See, we do this geo yeah. Brooklyn right, geography right, right. when you meet someone else in Brooklyn. But, uh, so. No, I, I graduated with a degree in education from Brooklyn College, yeah. and um, then a master's in Fordham with special education, moved up to Rockland okay. about that time. And uh, I, yeah, I remember one of the uh, big issues that I covered when I wrote for the Canarsie Courier was this uh, uh, breast density information yes. law. Yes, 
Yes. And uh, I remember I had pictures of <laughs> dense breasts <laughs> on the, in the picture. It made for a salacious type of uh, article. But, well, it was. But it's, well, a, but it was it's a serious case, issue. It's a very serious issue. And because I, tell I you, didn't realize that, you know, you could be, well, we, I'll use the street jargon, you could be flat-chested and have dense breast yes. uh, tissue. You could be uh, a full-figured and not have it. So it doesn't matter the size of the breast, whether you have dense breast tissue, but it's the mammogram that can't see whether there's cancer yeah. if you have dense breast tissue. That's right, it, it hides, it hides. How'd I get that, it good? does hide, very good, very okay. good. Dense breast tissue actually could hide a yeah. tumor. <laughs> and unfortunately, many women will go for their mammography and get a letter that says everything, you know, there was no indication of anything mm -hmm. and yet they probably, they could have yeah. uh, small tumors that then evolve. And that's how it started with a woman from Long Island who actually had done that, had gone for mammographies regularly and um, there was nothing indicated and then she felt something and there still was nothing indicated. And she finally did go eventually for a follow-up to exams, and more, more significant exams, MRIs and things like that. And um, unfortunately discovered she had breast cancer. Wow. How long cancer. ago is this? Because I know medical science, of course, the technology is advancing per day, not I wouldn't even say per year. So more and more I've dealt with, not exactly with that, but you know, I mean, I'm not a medical doctor. I'm a rabbi, of course, but then I have to consult people, you know, about situations well, so they tell me all their Right. Story. Yeah, so we, this story led us, uh, Senator Flanagan and myself, to develop this legislation that actually uh, every woman who goes for a mammography who actually is, has dense press tissue is given, is, that is indicated in the report that you have dense breast tissue, um, please follow up with your doctor for uh, maybe additional mm -hmm. exams that might be necessary, and we're saving lives. Uh, once we passed it in New York, it passed, I think, a lot. Uh, Hawaii passed it, and then I think California, and then at least 20 other states, at least 20 other states have passed this legislation, and it is modeled being considered. Modeled after New York's law. Modeled after New which York's law. Which you sponsored. Which I sponsored okay. with Senator Flanagan. Yes. <laughs> Who's and now the Senate state, Majority Leader. That's so. right, yes. <laughs> you know, and, and the truth is, um, I meet women, uh, the other day I was actually, we were sitting and talking, and somebody mentioned something, and she said to me, oh, I got, I got the letter. That, that told me that, and actually we had scheduled to go for a follow-up exam. Mm -hmm. So I feel uh, very proud that we are saving lives and, and um, raising awareness, and it, well, it, that's important. When you talk about oversight, I have to bring this up because uh, there's a big <laughs> issue in your district uh, about yes. oversight. Yes. And it has to do with the East Ramapo School mm -hmm. District. So here you are, teacher, Still, I presume you still have your license. You could still of be called course, a teacher. Of course, I could. I, <laughs> so, I still, I'm a teacher. So, I'm always a teacher. Once so a teacher, always, <laughs> always a, a teacher. teacher. So you, here you are. You know, your your heart and your passion is in education. I taught you, in East Ramapo. Then you taught in East Ramapo for over twenty years. And you're Jewish. Yes. Okay. So, you know, you now you got this quandary about whether you know you have a school board, school district, a school board rather that's made up of Religious. Well, they are they are Hasidic and ultra Orthodox. Yes. Okay, and then they, and and they're something about the way they were voting or the way they were doing something, and then you wanted an outside monitor, even though uh, the, who's independently chosen, even though these people are elected, and there's a thing. Do you feel? Well, first of all, I want to I want to preface all this. Do you feel you've been unfairly treated in yes. your characterization of how people? Yes, terrible. Okay, so uh, well, I, I have been unfairly treated because yeah. this is not about what religion the school board is. This is not about what culture they are uh, or what color they are. This is about the actions of a school board, and uh, that are problematic. Um, and this has been happening over a number of years. Uh, it started oh, maybe in 2007 or 8 when the entire school board then was taken over by one community. Um, but that, that's not even the issue. The issue okay. is the actions of the board. So t tell me yeah, about some, that, please. The, you know, it was the beginning. They, st they closed down a couple of the elementary schools and then were, tr were selling them. But of course, they had this assessor who had came in, came in and then assessed it at a very low value. And eventually, that was seen as illegal and he was um, charged 
with them providing wrong information. Mm -hmm. um, they were trying to, they closed down schools, they were um, cutting programs, the, the, um, I'm just going to give you a few, because sure. I can't go on and on. Right, but I know. we the, could be here um, for many the hours. Control, the the controller did um, a an audit, audit of yeah. the textbook funding that, mm -hmm. that is provided, all the private schools have provided, there was no documentation of where any of that money was going. A lot of school programs were cut, um, but none of the private school programs were cut there. Actually, transportation was expanded. But there were many, many issues in terms of cutting programs and what kind of um, information is provided to parents, um, guidance counselors, um, teachers cut, music and art programs cut. Um, and there were a number of actions that the board had taken, and I can't go into detail, mm -hmm. that were noted by the state education department. Okay. As yeah, you well. could go into detail, but you don't have the time I to go into detail. I don't have the time to go it's into not detail. No, right, right, yeah, okay. right. It's not a legal and reason. The, for right. You, right. So okay. eventually, the state <laughs> education department made a determination with the board, of, with the regents, that they would send in, it, it, with conversations yes. with us in the state assembly and senate and the community, uh, they decided to to send in Hank Greenberg. Who, who is from Albany yes. and member of Temple Israel in Albany yes. and member of the Jewish community here. Yes. So who, just who, so you who know went in for, for, um, several, for um, I forget how many, maybe several months, yes. and um, to review the actions of the board and the budgets and, and all, all the right. necessary um, issues that, that he felt were important to, to be able to make a report in terms of what was happening in the district in response to a lot of the concerns of the public school parents who were um, very upset about what was happening. And also, they would share their concern at board meetings. Unfortunately, the board was not present. The board would go into executive session for several hours and not come out till 11 o'clock at night, almost every single board meeting, which left you know, very little opportunity for interaction which further frustrated the public school parents. Um, oh, these are elected officials, the school board. Uh, yes. They're elected officials. Yes. They're unpaid, but they're elected. That's right. So they couldn't have the community just vote for someone else and it, have someone else? They could, except that the, the majority of the community, uh, um, it really at this point, the larger majority of the community, the, community, the private school community, or the community, the Hasidic and ultra-Orthodox Orthodox community. And so they vote for this board, uh -huh. uh, outnumbering the, the, the public school parents. Right. Although it, it, they are elected right. by a large majority of the, the private school parents. Well, you just have parents. to lock the Orthodox in the No, homes. but, I, but <laughs> they, their responsibility is for yeah. fo focusing on the entire community. First, right. the public they school, should, because right. that is their responsibility right. being elected to the public school sector. But, but certainly, you know, looking at the entire community as well, but there, that became problematic, and Hank Greenberg's report was very clear in terms of the issues of concern. And um, we, my colleagues and I, looked at the issues, and we took the uh, one piece of it, and more or less took pretty much most of the language, and worked on a piece of legislation, taking his recommendations for a monitor that would provide oversight of the school board. Um, but it's more than oversight. In, in our language, we also talked about working with the school board on developing policy, providing guidance. This would be someone chosen by the state education department mm -hmm. to, uh, who would have a background in education and, you know, and be able to provide um, guidance and discussion and um, be able to, I thought, have a collaborative um, opportunity and also to help them make decisions that would be more appropriate for the public school sector. And I believed deeply that this would be an opportunity to bring the communities together, to give more trust of the public school parents that this was, they, they were making decisions that, the, that Hank Greenberg was, had suggested would be guided by the monitor as well. And, and I actually thought that the, and there's also the opportunity for the monitor to override a decision by the board. If the board then would make a decision that after much discussion that the board was not going to uh, follow what, what um, the monitor so would suggest. Where's the bone of contention? That's a good question. Okay. I heard that the bone of contention is that this is an appointed person, and maybe this is inaccurate, so I'm just asking That's you fine. with that caveat in mind, I don't want, yes. you know, I'm, this is a friendly interview. I just want to know that, you know, that this uh, over, overseer would be 
able to overrule the elected school board yes. if it wasn't in the best interest of the public schools. That's right. Oh, okay. And he could overrule, override, but the board would then have the opportunity to appeal that decision. To whom? To the state education department. Who appointed the uh, overseer? Well, the, the state education department would, would have a uh, court well, to appeal, an opportunity, a process to appeal. But, well, like a 321A like process? I actually thought, that that, I, I actually thought yeah. frankly, that yeah. that would be rare. Uh -huh. Because I believe that there would be the opportunity to work together to provide guidance and direction. And maybe yeah. that would even be an opportunity for the monitor to say, well, you know, they're doing things quite appropriately. Mm -hmm. Perhaps they need just more funds, and, and they are moving forward in, in a manner that's, that's appropriate. I don't, and, they are, and they are doing working with me. Why couldn't we look at it that way rather than the other way? It's what I have been suggesting all along. Bring and that's what's in your heart. That's really, heart. this is okay. what I believed in. That's bringing the community together, more, more trust. And if, don't forget, this is a board that really has focused on the private school sector. That's where their lives are. This monitor would bring to them understanding of a public school needs that maybe they could work together and develop a, a policy and budget together that would actually be responsive to both communities, but also there would be more trust in what they'd be doing. And they're recalcitrant or they're resistant to this. And what? And what I, have, I think it's and, unfortunate. I think it's when, unfortunate. And, and when these. Board and it's members. only f it's five years. It was five years, uh -huh. okay. and the goal really was to put together, working with the board, a plan to to enact to assure that we would have in place an appropriate public school education. For so that our I don't so, so that I don't continue the unfair whatever by accident. Tell me what has been un where you feel you've been unfairly vilified. I think I've been abused. In what way? When? Yeah. Abused in the language um, by in Twitter and all of those social um, little media. social media mm -hmm. issues. They've attacked me personally and only me of the three of us, which is the other piece here as a woman. Mm -hmm. um, uh, there has been um, no willingness to really um, see this as a positive. Uh, movement towards assuring that there is a public school education that's appropriate as well as bringing the communities together mm -hmm. which is something I, I said I have said in every single time I have made a comment and a speech about this that I have included that because I sincerely believe that it was appropriate what has happened is that the, there's such a divide in the communities that it's frightening it has created anti-semitism this mm -hmm. is not about anti anti-semitism it has created anti-semitism and that I find very I'm very fearful of that as a Jew I'm very upset about that so what I I really believed that by doing this it was an opportunity to close to close that down and bring the communities together and, and create trust and and, and honestly, that was not the reaction, and I'm very disappointed that was not the reaction. I've met with somebody recently trying to explain that. And I actually met with groups of, of people who I have, members of the community, have very good relationships mm -hmm. over the mm -hmm. years, and um, trying to explain that that was, obviously as a former a public school teacher and, and yeah. uh, kids, my own children went to public school, I feel that's very, very, that is essential for our state. Mm -hmm. that is, that is a, that's in our constitution, providing quality education for all our children. That is, needs to be our goal. Of course, that is one piece that's so important. Yeah. But, but raising trust, increasing trust, and assuring that there is guidance within that context, I saw it as a positive rather than an attack. And I, and I think the attack on me was unfortunate and um, disappointed well, and brought, insulted. And to some extent, it brought up Brown v. Board of Education. It brought back from the South, from the 1950s. Yeah. yeah. Well, you it know, this is, this is a large of, community of, of young children and, who are of color, Latino, mm -hmm. African-American, children who come from poverty, children who are immigrants, um, as my dad was, mm -hmm. uh, and um, children of high need who really need guidance and direction so that they can be part of our 
stayed and, and successful yeah. in our communities. And they would, their programs would, would diminish significantly. Now, I don't disagree with the board, and I've said this over and over again, the school district needs additional funds. And we really have worked really hard over the last couple of years, given you know, the change in, in the economic uh, situation, we have increased the funding. We planned on increasing it even more if we were able to get aside, assurance of uh, this monitor. Aside from social media, has the mainstream media Gannett and all the, you know, had treated you fairly? Uh, no, the mainstream media, I think, had really um, taken a, a very strong view of this in terms of supporting the legislation. The New York Times, mm -hmm. um, the local, the Journal News, the LOHUD, um, they well, have... That's Gannett. So, yeah, yeah, yes, right. Gannett. And they have truly seen this as a positive, a step in the right direction. Because uh, they understood over the years the terrible conflict between the private school and public school parents, and then the lawyers the, that the board hired, who attacked and and used very unfortunate language for a parent and a student, and then the board said they would fire them, and they never did. And the millions of dollars they spent on this law firm, mm. as compared to maybe a couple hundred thousand dollars on the previous lawyer who represented the district. Um, that, I think, is unfortunate, too. And there was this gentleman, and I just did some research about this, Benny Politsek, uh, Munz, a community activist in Muncie. Do you know who he Benny is? Benny? Po Politsek. Okay. P-O-L-A-T-S-E-C-K. Okay, I don't know who that is. Uh, he's a president of marketing firm Colossal PR, and he wrote an editorial that said, in East Ramapo, sectarianism blinds a politician. And, you know, there's that headline, and that's a headline, and obviously there's uh, uh, his view of why that's, uh, you take exception with that, I believe. Well, I don't, I, they don't, they, I don't remember okay, reading that. Okay. <laughs> I, I, you know, we were in session, I didn't read no, everything. That's fine. I but understand. we had many organizations, all the, the rabbis outside of the Hasidic community and the yeah. ultra Orthodox community yeah. throughout Rockland County yeah. came together our reform and conservative rabbis in Rockland County right. all came in support of the legislation. Okay. Um, the American Jewish Committee, uh, which is more of a national committee, came out and, and made a statement in support of this legislation. New York City Bar Association right. and many other Jewish leaders throughout yeah. the state and within our communities joined in support of the legislation because they saw this as an opportunity, mm -hmm. an opportunity to, to better provide for the public school students, but an opportunity especially to bring our communities together. Was there some alternative measure, because you're working with Senator Carlucci on this and Assemblyman Zabrowski and, and so, to come up with a new, at the last hours of the session, to come up with something? There was something that was presented by uh, Senator Carlucci. Um, it, the Assemblyman Zabrowski and I sat down when we, when we saw it, it would, we weren't told about it, it just was introduced. Um, and we sat down that day with Program and Council and we decided that we would, we would okay, you want to, let's see what we can do to compromise. So that legislation was two and a half years and so we, we said, okay, but we'll, we won't go to five, which was the original legislation, we'll go to four or three and a half. We, tried to, we, we took parts mm -hmm. of the legislation and, and tried to... Um, Massage it. Yeah, in yeah. a way that we could find more acceptable, but we would find compromise. We didn't, the override wasn't in it, but we said, okay, we'll, we'll have the monitor appeal to the state education department for a review of an action and then also ask for a stay of the action as well. We did that. The problem is that they, ref that first of all, I don't know if it ever would have passed anyway. With, well, that's the first thing. But we did try, yeah. and we did revise it. There was just there were several pieces of it that, and I'll mention one, that really got was a point at which we couldn't, we wouldn't compromise. the The language on that bill was that the only opportunity that Monitor would have to have any involvement would be only if, with violations of state or federal law which means that the monitor couldn't look at budgets and review budgets and go over to various policy issues, but only if the board had a violation of state or federal law. How would the monitor suggest that? That would have to be taken to court. 
-hmm. they then, and also the issue of the executive sessions, the monitor would be would be restrained from really talking about what was going mm -hmm. on within right. that context. So the, those are two issues, and there were several others, but those were the two main issues of concern that we could not, and, and quite frankly, the State Education Department felt strongly as well that, that those were issues that would not provide any opportunity for a monitor to be able to interact mm -hmm. and work together with the board. Yeah. And it was just something in writing that had no impact whatsoever. So, so that was yeah. the end of that. But I don't know if it would have passed anyway. Because I remember at the last days of session that all of a sudden there was this huddle in the back of the assembly chamber. And it was like, oh, wait a minute, I, I, if I only could be a fly on, you know, <laughs> in there, if I could get my microphone in there <laughs> secretly. Or... Well, we, we tried. We, <laughs> we, we did. I think that Assemblyman Zabrowski and I truly made every effort to say, okay, we, we can live with that, we won't do the override, we'll change that. But if the monitor will go in there without mm. any ability to really interact with right. the board, except if, if for some reason there was a clear indication that the board had violated state or federal law. Right. And then one, the question is, does that mean it has to go to court before it? He can, he can suggest that they violate state of, and, and then it's, would the board allow the monitor to have any interaction with them other than if there were situations of state or federal law? What, there, was no, there was no sense to doing that at all. What about the uh, other observant Jewish legislators, you know, Phil Goldfeder, Mike Samanowitz, Dove Hyken? Yeah, they, I don't understand it, quite frankly. What, what, is, uh, what did I just they would, They were not with? happy with, they, not. they opposed the legislation. And um, they, they refused to have any conversation at all. They wouldn't have a conversation with me. Well, or with not... any of our colleagues. They didn't want to discuss it, period. Well, that's not nice. <laughs> uh, honest to goodness, that's the truth. I actually uh, said to, to Assemblyman Goldfeder, uh, I, I, let me show you this letter so that you understand that this is, this is not about uh, anti-Semitism. This is not, mm -hmm. not what this is. And I, sh tried, I showed him a letter from the various rabbis throughout Rockland County, right. outside of the community, who wrote a letter in support of the legislation. He wouldn't look at it. He threw it, at, threw it back at me. Wow. So I, I, I really was disappointed in that. So emotions but, ran high over yeah. this. Yeah. Oh, yes. I was disappointed. I thought that at least an honest conversation and sharing why you feel that way and why is this necessary or sure. why you disagree with me in a personal way, would have been a much better approach. And Dove Hyken? Did he? No. Nothing? Not even a... No. no. Okay. Um, what about Walter Mosley? Did he switch? I don't understand that. He I, switched from supporting it to not yeah, supporting it? Yeah, he took his name off. I, I don't quite understand. He wouldn't... Ha I, I tried to have a conversation with him. He didn't want to have a conversation with me. Wow. So um, I, I think that there was a great deal of pushback from the uh, African American and Latino um, or task force, uh -huh. they, or they, uh, almost every single one of them supported the legislation, um, with the exception of Mosley. Oh, wow. So you think um, because he represents Assemblyman Crown Aubrey Heights. was one of the strongest supporters. Right. But because Assemblyman Mosley represents Crown Heights, so that's... Could, well, that, that, could, that be, could be. Yeah. So who's this Weissmondel? What is it? He's the head of the board? He's the president of the president board. President of the board. What's his yes. first name? Well, I'm Weissmondel. That's what I, I remember I, because I, it's a, I knew it. Okay. That's fine. You'll find I knew it, but um, you're okay. asking me, so... <laughs> that's fine. No, no, no. That's Yehudi. okay. It's, I have those... Yehudi. Yehudi. Right. Okay. Weissmondel. Um, is he talking to you? We had conversations previously, <laughs> um, not not recently. Um, we had a conversation about the spin-up bill uh, a number of months ago. This is right before. Right. Uh, but recently, Hank the, uh, towards the end not, of session, no, was we haven't had a conversation. He, no. Because he's been up here. I mean, I see yeah, him. Yeah, no, I haven't had a and conversation. He with, no, he didn't reach out to me. Wow. You would think that's how you get these. You like, would these, think. Now, th this made it. This your bill made it through the education committee. And we passed on the floor. We passed it, in the assembly. And it passed in the assembly. Yes, it did. Oh, what was the vote? Do you remember? It was eighty to. I forgot. Okay. I forgot eighty to. Um, but you had eighty yay votes. Eight, eighty votes. And it took seventy six to. Right. Yeah, so it was right. a close vote. It was a close vote. Yeah, but some people it was it was a late day, so some people had to leave for a variety of reasons. Uh -huh. So, and then there were two votes that I had had, but one. Uh, both of them had one was one 
one of the assembly members was ill and the other one right. had, had some, a personal issues right. issue at home and told me the day before they, they, they were disappointed it wasn't that day because then they could have voted for it. So I would have had probably about 80, 84, 85 yeah. votes. This and is what I anticipated. Well, well let me ask you, uh, I don't want to leave them out. Uh, David Weprin, how did he, is he support? No? Voted no. Okay, and Speaker Silver, or, or former Speaker Silver Show? Voted no. He voted no? Yes, okay. he did. Did he explain why to you, or does he not talk um, no, about this No, we either? didn't. We didn't have that. Okay. We did have a very brief conversation early on. Um, speaker, when I first got to the state assembly, I had a meeting with the uh, super, the superintendent of East Rampo. There's 2007 with members of the board, um, with um, uh, you know, actually one of the rabbis of the community who came up, who was involved. Um, talking about the issues of East Rampo and the concern about some of the funding and the formula. Because I do still do believe that the funding formula is skewed, that there needs to be sure. a, a revision. And I've said that for years. I actually wrote a piece of legislation in 2008 or 9, to, uh, which included a number of other school districts, to talk about sometimes how funding formulas are skewed in terms of what would, what the assumption is for income, and I and I, and I still yeah. believe that there needs to be additional funds. Look, I, w I used to from and, and Speaker Silver was very open right. to the concerns of the community and very open to okay. having this dialogue. So, uh, well, in the '80s and '90s, for over a decade, I was a reporter for WRKL when they were really doing news. And you know they were still talking about the funding of the school districts in Rockland County as being yes. inadequate. Yes, they they are, and so, I will continue to, to yeah, say that. And East Rampo, you know, given given the circumstances, it's a high need district, and there is a the funding formula is skewed, suggesting that there is a higher income than than there is in terms of the formula, and it needs to be reviewed. And all the but I would suggest that that's not unique for East Rampo. There are a lot of mm -hmm. school districts that are in that situation. Right. Uh, in the few seconds we have, I just okay. uh, because I think you oppose this, uh, the in education investment tax credit. That I do the, oppose again, it. The, I've always opposed it. And uh, so the Jewish commu uh, observant Jewish community again, that's an issue that they. Well, wanted. it's interesting. This is the first year that I've, they've actually been vocal about that particular right. issue. Um, I, I don't believe in the investment tax credit because I, I do feel that we need to utilize the funds that would be taken from the the state fiscal. Budget and be given to private at private schools, um, and I do believe that it would go to the wealthiest. I quite frankly do not believe that it would go to to most of your religious schools, either in either Catholic or mm -hmm. uh, Jewish. or Jewish yeah. or other uh, other religions. I believe it would actually be used and by the wealthiest in our communities to the charter schools because that's what this is about. It's about millionaires and their corporations. Because if, if you really knew that legislation, and we could spend some time in it, we don't have the time, but if you looked at that legislation, you would realize that this is about millionaires supporting private schools and charter schools. Okay. That's what it's about. We'll Mark, we have that. to uh, But I really, I really appreciate you t discussing this and being so open about this. Uh, you know, I just want did anyone accuse you of being anti-Semitic? Yes, on a regular basis, daily. So One, they, there, there was someone from my community, and I'm not going to say a name, okay. who actually had a picture of me on, on social media uh, calling me Khomeini. Mm. That's hurtful. And that I is. think that's disappointing. Yeah, well, more than disappointing. Yes, I it would is. Say. You're being but, kind but of I'm, disappointing. But people know me in Rockland County right. and throughout the, the region. They know I care deeply about the children. They know that um, my motives are honest. Sure. And, yeah. and I'm hopeful that that will carry out. And, you know, we have to work together, and I represent all the communities. It's one of the most diverse in Rockland County, and, and I'm, I'm very proud of, of being the, having that opportunity. Yes. And so we need to move on and come together and really okay. make a difference well, for the children. Well, keep up the good work and be successful and, uh, you know. Thank you. Uh, Go ahead. Give her a blessing. <laughs> Give her a blessing. <laughs> she <laughs> needs thank it. Thank you. I could thank always, you, Madam Assemblyman. <laughs> Assemblyman Jeff, thank you for, you know, that's what America makes great, that we can debate all the issues and open up, and that's where we are in the Jewish view. Yes. And uh, continue your good work for the Jewish people and the uh, New thank York you. State, and, and do it with good health. Yes. Thank you. Thank okay. you. I appreciate that, Rabbi. Well. Thank you very much.